is fascinating. So, George Osborne has said the next election is all about the economy. I actually think it's about immigration, but he says it's about the economy. He says the Conservative Party is meant to be the party of low tax. You need to start cutting taxes. And that leads nicely into your story. Yeah, so the Telegraph have uh, gone on about how uh, so they've interviewed a few MPs, Tory MPs, and they found that actually the, the, the feeling amongst Tory MPs is to prioritise income tax cut over inheritance tax 100%. cut. 100%. And um, I think there's been there's been some rolling of the pitch in recent weeks. There's been talk around this inheritance tax cut, but actually I think that uh, and Jeremy Hunt has said in um, uh, that he wants to prioritise that at the the March budget, which makes complete sense. What about but, both? I don't think I don't think that's affordable, is it? Um, that's going to cost the an absolute fortune. But also I think that. Um, the, the thing about inheritance tax cut is you could have a conversation about the rights and wrongs of it, but an income tax cut is going to make a more tangible yeah. difference to, to people and more immediately. But you see, so, so I have to be careful what I say here, but I have long said that anyone who earns under uh, 20000 for example, should have no tax yes. to be mm -hmm. paid. So you need to raise the, the basic rate of tax threshold Understood. much higher. Now, finally, the government seems to have woken up to the fact that it's meant to be a Conservative party. Well, have they? I mean, I read, well, they? I read this morning in the Telegraph, I'm sure you've seen this, that they were thinking about tinkering with the thresholds of child benefit. Yeah, they are. You know, forget that. Slash well, so the reason they're doing that is because middle class parents would then, drag. yeah, but they would yeah. then benefit, and of course they're more likely to vote for them. I, do, you know, <coughs> they're just me. looking at the wrong things. They're tinkering around the edges. You're absolutely <coughs> right. Let everybody earn twenty thousand before they pay tax. Let, well, so also let's go back to inheritance tax. I know it is a loathe tax, but it doesn't affect that many people mm. in in terms of the demographic. However, electorally, it might play well. Um, I'm not sure. It would, I'm not sure. I, I disagree that it would play well. I think what's interesting about inheritance tax is that yeah, it affects a, a tiny amount of people. I think 3.7 percent. I can't states. believe that's true, but. but but um, the number. polling polling actually suggests that even though people aren't directly affected by it, they still think that it's... Well, it's, they think it's iniquitous bad. because you've already paid tax and you've done well and then you've got this money and then why should you pay tax again? Yeah, but you could say that about <laughs> other things. You know, when I go out to the shop and buy a, a paper or something... But that's I'm, a choice. I, sure, but that's... Buying is not a choice. But I still pay tax or via VAT, uh, via income tax, before I then go and um, yes, buy Yes, but you've chosen thing, to buy those goods. Sure, but, but I think you pay stamp duty on a house, which is massive. So mm -hmm. actually, that VAT you're paying on a paper is well outstretched by stamp duty. And I'm not a fan. I'm a fan of cutting in, in income um, inheritance tax. But David knows not now. I think the optics of it would be disastrous for an election. But, but isn't, your argument doesn't but, but, stand but, but, up. But, well, let's go back to the optics of where they are, because there's a lot of chatter with the, within the Conservative Party that actually they are in such trouble that actually they would try anything right now. Yeah, but that, one of the one of the points made here is that one of the Tory MPs wants to wants to, the, 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 the government to do that because it would create a, a dividing line with Labour over inheritance tax. But I don't think that's going to be to the benefit no. of the Tories. I think if there is going to be a divide excuse me, a dividing line, I think that will be to the benefit of Labour because they will be able to say that we want to be pushing for income tax cuts, mm. cuts which help working people, whereas the Tories are prioritising a tax cut. Oh, for the rich, that, and that's, could... that's the optics. Yeah. Also, just in terms of the economy, surely what they should do is unfreeze those tax bans because in terms of fiscal drag, the numbers being dragged into those tax bans, it's absolutely ridiculous they, the way they've been left. In fact, that stealth tax raise, or, or leaving them where they are, has brought in 12.5 Five billion this year will bring in 27 yeah. billion next year. Well, I think there's different ways of of uh, of putting an income tax cut into practice. One of which is a literal cut, but another way is raising those thresholds mm. so that more people who are working get to keep more of their money. And I think there's a couple of interesting things in here. One is that uh, it mentions that Rachel Reeves, Labour, has said that she <laughs> wants to be doing it as well. But also there's a couple of there's they quote uh, Jonathan Gullis, who is a right wing Tory MP, but also Matt Warman, who's in the One Nation group, and all these different people on the political spectrum all kind of united around the need for income so tax So what's cuts. Rachel Reeves up to? Well she wants to ensure that working people, if there's going to be money to go around to help uh, help with, uh, in, uh, with tax cuts, yeah. it's going to go to working people. That seems fairly logical to me. Renee? Of course. Right now I think working people need more money in their I pockets. I do too. Um, I'm not sure there will be money to go around. I mm. think that's um, questionable. But the tone has changed from Labour, without a doubt. <clears throat> 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Over the the last few years, but I think I think it is the right thing economically, but I think it's also politically as well. So that um, Labour aren't going into the election with a dividing line, with the Tories being a tax cutting party, which they're not, and we're, and Labour is actually matching. It so so very interestingly, I looked at the polls yesterday. Labour needs a twelve point seven percent swing to get into power with a majority. Now Blair only got a ten percent mm. swing. Mm. Clement Attlee got a twelve percent swing. Mm. So no one's had a twelve point seven percent swing. No, and I think... And that's because of boundary changes. Boundary changes, and I think that this lead is soft, and I do think it's soft, and as we get closer to Why the Why do you think it's soft? Because I still think there's so much that's going to happen between now and uh, the end of the year. I think people are disaffected, but when they get to the ballot box, they might <laughs> not be that But that goes back to this, because actually, if the Conservative Party pull themselves together and give those tax cuts, then maybe people can be bribed. Possibly, possibly. And I, I actually agree with Renee that I think that that poll lead is um, a little bit on the soft side. I think it will inevitably narrow. But 12.7%, the way you frame it there, I, I don't disagree, you are correct in what you said, but it is slightly national swings don't really work that way that it's it's it, it down on a constituency by constituency basis you know you don't individual constituencies don't need that sort of swing in no. order to, to to be one i mean, that, that, I mean there, are lo there are a lot of uh, conservative politicians deeply worried about the fact they could lose their jobs and they should be <laughs> and they should be absolutely right and we'll talk more about that in just a minute and, and that leads to this story as well about the conservative party i've long said it's not one party it's five parties and you mentioned the one nation there well they're just the lib dems aren't they <laughs> well, yeah and then you've got the erg the New Conservatives, the Conservative Growth Group. You've got all of these under this umbrella. What's the next story? Uh, it's it's some um, political analysis from uh, Stephen Swinford and Oliver Wright in the Times, talking about kind of the uh, the, the the aftermath of the, the Rwanda fallout. Um, obviously, everyone knows about the Rwanda bill. Uh, about sixty odd Tory MPs. Sixty four back the amendment but then only 11 was it voted um, against the bill in the end mm. good 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 <laughs> analysis there um, um, but um, it, it just demonstrates that the Tories are incredibly divided o over this and it does feel though uh, that, that the Tories are not doing themselves any favors here by presenting themselves to the, the public that they are so divided amongst such uh, along a, such a key issue mm. when push came to shove of course 64 people for 64 people back those amendments but I think when push came to shove they realized that if they voted against the bill it would topple the government so they finally decided that they wouldn't only 11 rebelled in the end but it wouldn't have toppled the government would it because there would have been a confidence well, vote they all would have rallied around him and they would have got through I don't know I mean I think I think it would have been in tricky waters 100% oh, and there would have been questions over whether or not there should be a new leader but there are those questions anyway now so what happens now it goes through the House of Lords do you think because obviously there will be parliamentary ping-pong played that's right yep so it goes to the Lords um, the Lords will be debating it they'll inevitably be putting down a lot of amendments I suspect that Quite a few of the crossbenchers will want to try and slow things down, gum up the works a little bit. Mm. After a couple of months, I would say, it's, it'll go back to the Commons, and that's when ping-pong comes into play, which is where um, the House of Lords, have, if they vote through amendments to the bill, it goes to the Commons and they have to vote on it. So it goes back and forth, back and forth for a little while. And, and just in terms of that, will it pass? Yes, eventually it yeah, will pass. I think so um, it will pass. I think the interesting one thing I think is slightly interesting here is that there is a thing called the Salisbury Convention, which is that the House of Lords doesn't vote down things that are in a manifesto. Indeed, the primacy so, of the of that chamber. Right, yeah. So the idea is that. Um, they wouldn't do that here because Rwanda wasn't mentioned in the 2019 manifesto. But I think that something is slightly underpriced is that there was still a Tory pledge in 2019 to reduce immigration so I just wonder whether there's a little bit of ambiguity there and then maybe some of the Lords especially the crossbenchers might try and take advantage of it mm, I, I agree but what they will do is they will have so much ping-pong and amendments they will try and delay it as long as possible so the election time. happens before it actually passes and mm. that will then have a profound impact on Rishi Sunak and his chances I mean I think that we saw how scared Rishi is about it going to the Lords by his ridiculous press conference where he actually but it wasn't yeah, it was, it was, well, no, it was a party political broadcast no I thought it was a message to the Lords he called them appointed ie you haven't elected them people he, did. he used the words the will of the elected government <laughs> several times he was basically saying to the Lords stop Put this through. So what do you make of that? Because the journalists were all called there to this new fancy studio in number 10 and uh, he obviously then delivered his party political broadcast and they were all scratching their heads thinking why did you call us here? Because he's trying to make an enemy. 
of the Lords. He's trying to create a straw man that he can go into the election blaming the Lords yeah. for the failure of this policy instead of himself for continuing with a policy that is not going A policy work. he was never in favour of, of course, <laughs> and he didn't back it when he was Chancellor, and now suddenly he does back it's it. And his Home Secretary also didn't back <laughs> it. So that is the sort of mess they're in.